Before we talk about shielding and deshielding effects and what that implies on the HNMR spectrum graph, let's first talk about the graph itself to understand a few things. First, NMR stands for nuclear magnetic resonance. So HNMR is hydrogen nuclear magnetic resonance, which measures the oscillations on hydrogen atoms due to shielding or deshielding effects. Now notice from 0 to 14, going left on the graph is considered downfield. This is where we'll see peaks for hydrogens that are deshielded while going towards zero or to the right is upfield, and this is where we'll see peaks for hydrogens that are shielded. Notice all the way to the right at zero ppm is the TMS peak. This is tetramethylsilane, which is a pretty inert molecule, therefore used as a preferred solvent when performing HNMR because it will not interact with any compounds or molecules for which you are observing HNMR. 0 ppm is also referred to as the reader region or the signal region to indicate that solution has been received. TMS is a symmetrical, therefore nonpolar compound, hence producing an inert solvent for which HNMR is preferred. Well, let's talk about shielding and deshielding in this molecule and why it registers one peak at 0 ppm. Carbon is more electronegative than silicon. This means that carbon will have a greater attractive pull on electrons, or electrons are more attracted to carbon than silicon. So what will happen is the carbon atom will withdraw electron cloud density from the silicon atom. The same will happen on the other four methyl groups. Well, what does this imply for hydrogen and HNMR? Well, first of all, carbon, being the electron withdrawing group, makes silicon the electron donating group. And carbon that obtains silicon's electron cloud density will be shielded, thus deshielding the silicon. Well, because the carbon will become shielded, the hydrogens are more shielded. Hence, the peak at 0 ppm, which is upfield for shielded hydrogens. And it's one tall peak because all of these hydrogens are equivalent to each other due to the symmetry in this molecule. So all 12 hydrogens register in one tall peak at 0 ppm. So now let's compare three different molecules, some with functional groups, some without, to talk about shielding, deshielding, upfield, and downfield on the HNMR spectrum graph. And then we'll see later where these lie in chemical shift in ppm on the graph. So in the first molecule, we have a carbon attached to four hydrogens. Carbon is more electronegative than the hydrogens, which means carbon is the electron withdrawing group. It will withdraw electrons from the hydrogens deshielding the hydrogens of their electron cloud but not as much as these two. Notice on this molecule, we have a functional group. It's a nitro. It's hugely electronegative, which means it will withdraw electron cloud density from the carbon, which will cause an electron cloud density withdrawal from the hydrogen, which will once again deshield the hydrogens of their electron cloud, therefore causing a chemical shift of electron cloud toward the right of this molecule. And then here we have a hydrogen on a functional group. So that's the hydrogen we're going to be talking about. The oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen. Therefore, it will be the electron withdrawing group and withdraw electron cloud density from the hydrogen. This oxygen also contributes to electron withdrawing. It will withdraw electron cloud density from the carbon, which will in turn cause more electron cloud density to be withdrawn from the hydrogen all the way here on the oxygen. So this has the greatest electron density withdraw from the hydrogen, which means this hydrogen is the most deshielded. These hydrogens would be the second most deshielded, 
and these would be the least deshielded. These would be found downfield on the HNMR spectrum. These would be found somewhere in the middle, downfield though, and this would be found more upfield toward the TMS signal. But we'll see where they lie on the graph in just a moment. So here's the HNMR spectrum graph that I showed earlier. I included the TMS peak, just for reference, and I drew the three molecules that we compared. We learned that the hydrogens on the methane were the least deshielded because there were no functional groups with more electronegative atoms than carbon. So we should expect to find a peak for these hydrogens somewhere more upfield, meaning closer to zero. And indeed, we should find a peak somewhere between zero and two, and we'll find one peak since these four hydrogens are equivalent to each other. And then this molecule had a functional group, a nitro group, which is hugely electronegative, which caused extra deshielding from the hydrogens. So we should find a peak somewhere more downfield, and indeed we'll find a peak for these three hydrogens somewhere around here, and it'll be one peak because they're equivalent hydrogens. So then we come to this hydrogen on this molecule, which experienced greater deshielding effects due to the extra double bonded oxygen, which means we'll find this hydrogen more upfield toward the left or closer to 14. And indeed, we tend to find a peak for this hydrogen between 10 and 12. And there might be some splitting if this carbon group has hydrogens. There might be some splitting, but splitting in peaks on HNMR spectrum graphs is something we'll talk about in another video. Simple as that.